everyone! Today I would like to cook you something which is like this thin meat, which is very juicy and very tasty and it lies on the bread which is crunchy and bendy at the same time. And they together made it to be this very beautiful recipe called lahmacun. In Turkey it's the number one street food and the takeaway. Lahmi and acun. Lahmi means meat, acun is some kind of dough. It is the recipe of all these grounds from Armenia to Syria, Iraq, even goes to Pakistan, a version of it to India as well. But this is the recipe of these geographies and that's the important thing. And it gets slightly different when you go around, but today I'm going to make the Turkish version. This is a recipe that is cooked usually outside in the big ovens and I'm probably one of the first people who have done it on television in such an easy way that everyone can make it. And I'm going to give you such Rifika tricks that you get that taste that you get outside in a wood oven in the conditions of your house. Hope you'll enjoy it. This recipe is something you should definitely try before you die. <laughs> I can say that. This is like an introduction to lahmacun. So I'm going to make a dough, but at the same time for the people who say, Rifika, it's impossible for me to make a dough. So give me an easy version. I'm going to give you a two minute easy version of it as well. I have here a hundred grams of flour. I'm going to add half a teaspoon of yeast, a pinch of sugar for the yeast to eat when they first wake up and 60 milliliters of one fourth of a glass of water. Now I'm going to mix this with also half a teaspoon of salt. First I mix this with the spatula. It could be a wooden spoon as well, so that everything goes together. Then I'm going to mix it with my hands. We have to knead the dough so that the yeast wakes up. And as you can see, the dough is not smooth, but as I do this like for two minutes, it's going to get that way. And now, as you can see, the dough is almost not sticky and it's much smoother. So I make it a round thing like this and put a damp cloth, which is like a little wet and let it rest. And beneath it is going to be a wood surface so it doesn't catch cold. So I'm going to use 200 grams of minced meat. This is beef and lamb mixed, but I know we have a lot of great followers from India. If you don't want to use beef, you can use all lamb. If you don't have access to lamb and you just have beef, you can add a bit of like a small half a teaspoon of butter to this mixture so that always the lamb is more fatty than the beef. So we can increase the taste that way. You can even use chicken because this is more expensive, etc. And if you use chicken, add a bit more herbs. And if you have cumin, a bit of pepper and tomato paste. This will give the chicken's meatiness more. And if you have the skins, add the skins. So basically that's it. Now I'm going to add a lot of onions. We had this discussion about like, I said, probably Turkey is one of the places which use a lot of onions and lots of people from India said, no, you're not, we are. I want to send a big kiss to all of you and hope after this COVID thing is over, I want to come to India and spend time with you guys a lot and learn different techniques because from Indian cuisine, I have thousand things to learn and thousand things to be inspired from. So to this 200 grams, I'm going to add one and a half onions. I'm going to grate it actually, it's easier. When you grate it, you still have a bit of small chunks of onions and then the water as well. The water breaks down the meat so it becomes softer and etc. This is not necessary one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this baby. This is sujuk, but you can use any kind of cured meat, about 50 grams. What is cured meat? In some of the comments I've seen, people didn't get what cured meat. Cured meat is a meat that is done through a process, sometimes with spices, it's sometimes rest in salt, and it ages in a way. But when it ages, the flavors increase. Umami gets increased, which is like the fifth taste. And also, another thing, it's fermented. When you go to a lahmacun place, 
there is a bucket of the filling. It just sits near the oven for one hour, two hours, three hours. The onions and everything inside gets fermented. And it's one of the things which gives the lahmacun its flavor. So when you try to make the best lahmacun at home, you cannot, because if you put all the ingredients the way they are, you cannot get that taste. The reason is for it to sit in that warm, conditions for a while in big chunks. It's the magic actually, magic of fermentation. To get that, I want to use sujuk, but you can use chorizo, huh, what? Even prosciutto, if you have. I want to break down, so I'm going to add the rest of the onions. You can see now these sujuks are in this shape. For it to act like a knife, I'm going to just do this. Here you have inside. It looks like a paste. And to this I also add two cloves of garlic. <laughs> Done. And the onions increase the bereket of the dish. It was small sujuk. And now how big it is. Teaspoon of salt, teaspoon of black pepper. And if you have red pepper and if you like it hot, you can add it to your taste. He has made these. These are tomato sauces. I'm going to have, with the ones that I make, eight tablespoons. But if you have the ready-made ones, they are more dense usually. You can have six tablespoons of tomato puree. Or you can use even passata. Can I use just fresh tomato? Oh. Yes, thank you very much. You can use like one big uh, fresh tomato grated and add for the redness, for the color, a teaspoon of tomato paste. If you don't have red flake pepper, some people I know have something similar to isot. This is isot. This is like the smoked red flake pepper. You can use smoked pepper or paprika, all good. Or you can even use fresh red peppers. Mix it well. I'm going to have also some parsley. 10, 12 sprigs of parsley would do. Then we finely chop the parsleys and then roll in. As you can see, it depends. For example, yesterday I was making lahmacun. Probably it was because of the onions. It was more watery and it has to be a little watery. So I'm going to add around two tablespoons of water. This has to be soft like this. I think it has its own sound. This sound, yeah? Mm -hmm. You're right. Done. As you can see from 200 grams of meat, huge. If everyone eats one, this will feed 10 people. I don't do this always, but if you feel the meat is a bit chunky, I add a teaspoon of yogurt and yogurt acts like the onion, the acid. It also helps breaking down the meat so that it can be easily distributed. This is done in Antep actually. Were they doing it in the Arbaker too? Yes, yes. my mom would do that. It's a very tricky question. If you know make lahmacun or not. Ah. It's a very tricky question. Wow. This is done. So the meat is ready. My dough hasn't risen a lot. It shouldn't because it's just small yeast. It's just for the taste, not for it to rise. From this dough, we're going to make around three small lahmacuns. Can I freeze? Leftover. Yes, but what happens, especially in the minced meat, when it's raw, if you freeze it, it's already like broken down into small chunks. As the water expands, it also breaks some more of the cells, so the meat loses its total juiciness. And the juice goes away, the meat becomes drier. By the way, if you don't have sujuk, you can still make this. Just grate the onions instead of grating it together with sujuk. To make it round, I am pushing with my fingers this to the middle, as you can see from the bottom. Squeeze it like this. And then, not tapping the top, but the side, make it round. So, why do we make it round? When we're opening it for it to be more rounder. I put some flour on top of the beze and also to my rolling pin. You can always use a bottle to do that. Open it softly. When you started cooking, you had a dream. I had this wish that one day a French guy, for no absolute reason, cooks to his lover, husband, wife, a Turkish lahmacun. My mission will be completed. Tell us the best lahmacun you ever had. The best lahmacun I've had was in Diyarbakir. I fell in love with the guy and the lahmacun. We all did. Now, finally, I want it to be less floury because it's going to decrease the flavor. As you can see, it's really, really thin here. If you cannot make it this thin, you can just like do this really fast as well. And 
let's say if you have a crack here i have a small one what you can do is take a pinch and then close it with your fingers now you're kind of free you need something like this i have dusted it with a bit of flour and before you put the meat inside you have to make sure that everything is ready in my oven top and bottom is on it's in maximum degrees and we have also the cooking stones at the bottom the oven should be ready once you want to make lahmac now i distribute if this stays too long the water is going to wet too much of the thin dough and it will stick to the board so after now we have to be fast just leave a centimeter at the edges the edges will be very tasty all done now leave a finger for it to be not dirty to open the oven and then let the lahmacun slide when the first one is cooking i'm going to show you the easy way without the dough one here i have ready-made lavash actually this is probably adapted from ready-made tortillas so you can use tortillas for this add it to a non-stick pan which is working on the high heat heat it for a minute or something then add the lavash on top and while it's starting to cook add some meat mixture I want to show pictures of me 10 years ago, 11 actually, when I was first analyzing how to make lahmacun in its original place and how thin I was and etc. Et et now, it's already started to smell great. And the difference of this, because the dough is cooked in this case, I'm going to cook the bottom on the pan. Now it's, as you can see, changing color. I want a little bit of brownness at the bottom for the crunchiness and bendiness at the same time. I'm going to turn it off because it's going to continue a bit more in cooking. And I'm going to add this pan as close to the top as possible. The bottom is ready in how many minutes? Two minutes. This is the bottom. Wow. Yeah. As you can see, it's see-through. This is the top. It's there. very crunchy, huh? It's crunchy and bendy at the same time. That's the thing. And if you can eat this just plain like this, put just some lemon. Just bend it like this. Feelings. Always so good. We got the crunchy part, the bottom part. Mm -hmm. As we have eaten the crunchiness, mm -hmm. it will be rude to give other people the middle. So we, we should eat, eat it. Yeah. How do you feel, bro? Other than my hometown, I'm from the Arab country. It's really hard to find crunchy down margin in here, even Istanbul. Oh, I'm happy. How to eat it? First, you can put some parsley and some onions with sumac and parsley. And last but not least, lemon. And then you can roll it. Oh, it's more crunchy. This got too dry, guys. There is the iron in the fridge. Huh? <gasps> Oh my god, today is my lucky day. Give the middle to you then. Yes. <laughs> I I think the video is over now. <laughs> Guys, you know what to do. Please subscribe. Please leave comments why you like this video. And from one of those people, Burke is going to choose someone and make a set. We can send one person wherever he is. This one, the stone in the bottom of the oven and the rolling pin, yes? We have a lahmacun set now. Yes, we have a lahmacun set, yes. Now, I wanted to make a small wrap up. This is the one from the dough. The bottoms are really different because the yeast works and have these small bubbles and the crunchiness and the softness to go together. In this, it's more flat and of course the bread is a bit sugary. Now, when it's still hot, you can bend it, but as it goes drier, like this one, the bending becomes a little harder. But it is quite tasty and because it's so easy to make, I will even keep it in my mind. So, from the 200 grams of mincemeat, we had three handmade and five lavash made lahmacuns. 
that's it. Bye.